Hi everyone, greetings to all brothers and sisters in the Lord and to all the friends that he has called to watch this video. This is my introduction or welcome video to the channel that God has called me to start, as bold as a lion. And this is just basically for me to share my testimony from how he redeemed my life from the pit and how he has called me up until now. So basically starting out growing up, I didn't really learn much of anything about Jesus or God. I didn't really go to church. And so I was basically agnostic. I wasn't really sure if God was real or not. And I remember when I was a teenager, my stepdad, who was Mormon actually, gave me a King James Bible. And I tried to read it, had a really hard time with it, and kind of set it aside and didn't really think about God for a while. And when I was 20, I got married to my husband. We've been married uh, almost 18 years now, so that's amazing. <laughs> but soon after that, we had two girls, two beautiful girls, um, just love them so much. And I really wanted to be the best mother that I could for them and always wanted to be the best wife that I could. But after I had my second daughter, I just, I was working full time. I was getting up in the night with her, um, driving them back and forth to um, my mom's or my mother-in-law who were helping us with them, which was a huge blessing. And then coming home, trying to make dinner, be there for my husband, get you know the kids to bathe, to bed, and just do it all over again. And I just, I reached a point where I was like, something has to give. And I see now, this was definitely the Holy Spirit uh, drawing me and working in my life before I even knew him. And he basically led me to approach my husband and say, take my career that I had then, which was very stressful. And that was a big piece of why I felt so much weight uh, in trying to do everything in my life in my own strength. Uh, so I came to my husband and asked him if I could basically take my career down to equivalent to part-time as far as a time investment was concerned. And he was reluctant at first, but eventually, I think by the grace of God, he was uh, convinced. And so I did that. And then it was like, I finally had breathing room. And I know God did that so intentionally. I could be there more for my girls. And I also, he, he began to stir in my spirit that I needed to read the Bible. And so I didn't have one that I only still had that King James one. And so I told my neighbor that and she had an extra one that she gave me it was much easier to read. And so I started reading it and I was like, wow, I, I can understand this now. And it was totally the Lord opening it up to me. It was so awesome. And then my neighbor had invited me to her church and her Bible study. And I started attending after a while. I was a little hesitant and unsure at first because I'd never gone to church or anything. But I was just praying and crying out to God. It's like, God, if you're there, please show me that you're real because I need you. I just I cannot do my life on my own. I wanted to do everything, but I just honestly felt like I was failing and I never felt like I had enough of anything for anybody. <laughs> and I was just broken. And so coming to him with that lowly prayer, he answered me. And then he led me to uh, start attending that church and Bible study. And I was just devouring the word, love studying the word, uh, was absolutely in love with worshiping God through song. And he totally ministered to me there and um, drew me to himself and, and helped me to give my life to him uh, in the middle of worship. That, that's been a huge theme in my walk and just how the spirit has ministered to me in, in song and in praise and worship. And so I repented of who I was and how I'd been trying to do everything myself. I repented to the Lord, especially for trying to control my life because that was a huge sin. And, and I was plagued with crippling, crippling anxiety at the time. And that was why, because I was trying to do everything myself, was trying to control everything and that doesn't work. <laughs> so I'm so thankful to the Lord that he showed me that. And so I repented of that, especially because I, I knew the biggest thing I knew was I cannot find peace and the way I'm going is not peaceful and I need you, God. And so he accepted me, praise God for his mercy 
and he helped me to give my life to Jesus and I got baptized at that church and I became a member and uh yeah for a few years I just continued going to church and reading my bible and praying and just constantly listening to worship music uh, the Lord led me to get rid of all my secular music it just became such a uh, life source as a way for the Holy Spirit to really minister to me and reach me and so that became a huge part of my life. I got involved in uh, the worship team and just my heart just sang there, being able to sing to God. And uh, then a few years later, I what I didn't realize, and I will create a playlist about this, by the way, with teachings um, about the normal Christian birth, because what I didn't realize at the time was I had not gone through all the stages of a Christian birth. I had repented. I had given my life to Jesus. I put my faith in him. I had been baptized in water, made the separation from my old life, but I had not been filled with the Holy Spirit. But throughout this whole time, he kept drawing me. And I would recognize, and I had read the whole Bible um, at this point, a few years later after I was saved, or first, first started following Jesus. And... I knew that the Holy Spirit was supposed to be working. I knew I was supposed to be led by him. I knew he was supposed to be indwelling. And, but I struggled with when he was speaking to me, I had doubts. And uh, finally it got to the point, very similar to when Jesus first spoke to me, I felt desperate again. I felt like I don't have enough for the way I'm supposed to live in Jesus and everything that I need to be doing for my family and just everything I'm called to in my life. I just don't have enough. Like I need your power, God, you know? And I looked back um, a few months ago into my journals and I saw I had actually written out a prayer for the Holy Spirit to fill me. And so it was just like such an amazing thing. And it's a, a testimony and encouragement for anyone who is not sure if the Holy Spirit is dwelling in them or is working in their life or is really leading them every day. Um, if you keep seeking God, you'll find him. It's, it's the Luke 11 promise that, you know, if you keep asking and you keep seeking and you keep knocking, how much more will your father in heaven give you the Holy Spirit? And that's what he did for me. Even though I didn't know I was supposed to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, I just knew I needed the Holy Spirit more in my life and I just needed power and I just needed him. And so just crying out again in desperation he answered me, and uh, years later, here just this year, actually, in 2022, I finally realized about these steps of the Christian birth through a dear brother's teaching who's passed on, Brother Pawson, and um, going back to my Bible and looking at those steps and realized, okay, wow, no wonder the first couple of years I struggled because I wasn't filled with the Holy Spirit. But then I was. I kept seeking, and I was. Praise God. He was merciful to me. And I remember the moment, again, I was in worship. I was just in my house listening to worship. And I, I felt him speaking to me and was like, yes, I believe you. This is you. Come and dwell, you know, be, be the Lord of my life and lead me, Holy Spirit. And then he did. And so shortly after that, he started to reveal, really open my eyes spiritually to some of the things in the church I was attending that were just not in alignment with him. And so I started trying to, in faith, speak out about that. And I was just confused about all the opposition that I came up against. But I just kept kept speaking as the Lord led and kept, you know, trying to love people and giving forgiveness where it was needed and just kept going. And then the Lord brought me to a dear sister. I was dealing with what I now realize is um, some witchcraft from uh, someone who was following deceiving spirits. And I did not know how to handle it. I didn't know what I was dealing with. And I just knew it was bad. And I, was, I felt this spiritual warfare. And so the Lord led me to reach out to this sister who I really hadn't talked to before. And she... Uh, basically confirmed everything that I was seeing and said, yes, you know, I have seen this as well. And, you know, um, you need to speak truth into this situation. And then you may need to separate yourself from this situation and this person. And so I did that. And it was like, I remember when I prayed to the Lord about that, I, it was probably the biggest attack from Satan I've ever had in my life. And I felt like my head was spinning. It was crazy, but I knew it was Satan. And so I kept praying against it. And eventually he had to flee. 
and that stronghold was out of my life. And that was a huge, huge praise and breakthrough. And from that point, the Holy Spirit was really able to start speaking to me like crazy and just give me a ton of revelation and guidance and um, more details about my call and about where he's taking me and things he wanted me to learn and just so much. So it was like a, the floodgates opened. It was amazing. And so it just showed me that there were barriers there that Satan had put in my life. And I was so thankful that the Lord had broken those off um, with the help of this sister. And so he ended up partnering us together. And we ended up uh, both seeing a lot of things in, in our church that the Holy Spirit was telling us to address. And so we brought a message to the leaders. Uh, the message was not really uh, accepted or impl implemented, but he, he kept us continuing in that church and ministering to those there and just working as, as witnesses from the inside uh, to the life that the Holy Spirit brings until 2020 and COVID-19 hit. And then even at the beginning of the year before COVID-19 hit, the Lord started pulling me away from that church a little bit, little by little. And throughout the course of the year, he basically called me out completely. A series of things happened. It was very difficult, uh, but I ended up having one final message for the leaders. And the Lord showed me, after you give this message, that's it, separate yourself. And so I did that. It was very hard. I had a lot of fellowship built there. I had my kids integrated in the church. I made friends. Um, that was the only church home I knew. And so it was really, really hard, but the Lord is so good and faithful. He took care of me every step of the way and showed me that this was the right way. I know it doesn't make sense, but this is the right way for you. And so by the time I left, I felt ready to go. And at that point, he called my um, sister and I, who I'm still partnered with, praise the Lord. And she and I went into a house church and basically brought the same message, like that your God's desire for us as a body is to come under the submission of his Holy Spirit so that Jesus can be the head and Jesus can lead the church and Jesus can um, be the Lord of everything that we do as a body and as individuals. And that message ended up not being accepted either at the house church we were in. And so God called us out of there as well. And so to this point, and so that's been almost a year uh, that we've been in very, very small fellowship, but so fruitful. It's it's like the smaller my fellowship has become, the more fruit has has come and from my life and from the work that the Holy Spirit's doing. And so it's just amazing to see how God has led me. So through these years, especially since 2020, the Lord has deposited so much in me that I knew that he wanted me to share. Uh, had a little, little time on Instagram where he had me sharing a little bit, but he pulled me away from that too. He just, he spent from 2020 until 2022, just stripping so many things out of my life. And so that I could get down to bare bones with him and him alone. And that has been such a blessing uh, for me. And so all I can say from that as encouragement to you today is follow the Holy Spirit wherever he leads. Make sure that you are, you have had a full Christian birth. You have repented of your sins toward the Father. You have put your faith in Jesus. You've been baptized in water and you have had the baptism of the Holy Spirit as well, just as John the Baptist preached. And you find throughout Acts, etc. And I will add a teaching playlist about this, but with more detail, but then just trust the Holy Spirit to guide your life. Trust Jesus with your life. Wherever he leads you, it's good, even if it doesn't make sense. And that is my testimony. And throughout this time, he's deposited so much in me and I am now being called to share it. I'm so excited. It's hard to know where to start <laughs> because there's so much. But the Lord is good. He's giving me a few ideas. So I'm excited to share that. Pray it's an encouragement to you. 
share and listen as you feel led by the Holy Spirit. And may he guide and lead and bless and fill your life with Jesus today and always. In Jesus' name, amen. See you next time.